Hi, my name is Julian Adams and welcome to Simplified Safety. Today I'm going to talk to you about rooftop fall hazard surveys and I'm going to show you an example of one. A fall hazard survey is just the process of collecting information on existing or potential fall hazards. Now what constitutes a fall hazard can change depending on the code that you reference, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be referencing Federal OSHA. Federal OSHA says that anytime you are exposed to a fall that is four feet or more above a lower level, you're at risk and you need some form of fall protection. So what type of information do we need to collect about rooftop fall hazards? When I perform a rooftop fall hazard survey, I'm focusing on three key areas, and that's gonna be your walking surfaces, your working surfaces, and how you gain access to the roof. When it comes to the actual fall hazards, we wanna focus on distance to your roof edge, any level changes that you might find, any skylights that are on the roof, any roof hatches, exterior ladders, or other access points. Here are a few quick tips for performing a rooftop fall hazard survey. Make sure you stay 15 feet away from any fall hazard. I know it's not always possible, but when it is, please make sure you do that. Also, uh, make sure you tell someone what you're doing. Make sure that they know where you're going, when you're gonna be up there, and how long it's gonna take. And wear the proper PPE, whether that's a hard hat, safety gloves, safety glasses, or steel toe boots. Okay. Before we head out to site and show you the fall hazard survey, there are a few things that I wanna go over with you. First of all, the site that we're going to belongs to one of our customers, so thank you to our customer for letting us do this. Secondly, our customer's already taken the appropriate steps to address all of these concerns. And lastly, we're only gonna be addressing the types of fall hazards that we'll find on this roof, not every single fall hazard that's on this roof. Okay, let's head to site and start this fall hazard survey. The first thing that I noticed as we walk out onto the roof is that the hatch has no guardrail. OSHA says that any hole in the roof, which is what a hatch is, needs to have a guardrail all the way around it with a safety gate on one side. The other thing that you'll see is that it's pretty close to the roof edge itself, and we'll want to make sure that any users that step out onto the roof from the roof hatch are also protected from the hazard of falling off the roof. So some type of fall protection like a warning line or a guardrail will be needed there. So this right here is another common situation. You've got your rooftop units that are within 15 feet of the roof edge. And anytime it's temporary and infrequent, according to OSHA, which is less than two hours of time to do, happens less than once a month, you can use a warning line system at six feet from the roof edge. If it's closer than six feet to the roof edge, then you need to use something more like a non-penetrating guardrail or a personal fall protection system. So behind me, you have a lower roof, and typically to gain access to that, you use some form of a portable ladder, like an extension ladder. Now, that's not really a safe way to do that because you're walking up to a fall that's more than 48 inches. So the best thing to do here would be to add a guardrail uh, to protect the user as they walk up to the edge, and then use a stair system to get that person down to the lower edge safely. Now, once they're down onto that lower roof, this one specifically has higher parapets, which are nice. So they're 39 inches in height or more for most of the roof. And so the user is going to be safe for the most part, except for one section where the parapet goes below that. We're going to just use a warning line system that's going to be six feet from the roof edge. That's going to get that user into the safe working zone. So right here, we have a nice little level change. Anytime you have a level change that's 19 inches or more in height, you need to have some form of stair or ladder to get access to that other level a lot safer and a lot easier. The harder part about something like this too is that as it gets shorter, it gets closer to another roof edge. So we wanna make sure we're providing a nice and easy spot for our users to gain access to the upper level without having to put them closer to a roof edge to get the shorter step up. All right, so this right here is an example of a great safety culture. This level change is less than 48 inches, which means that OSHA does not require any fall protection for it. However, our customer decided to install guardrail here because this unit is close enough that while someone's working on it, they are at risk of falling off of this. And this is how we go above and beyond regulations to make sure our people are safe. So a hazard on the roof that's typically overlooked are your rooftop drains and your exhaust fans. These aren't big and flashy like an HVAC and because of that they can be overlooked. But let's make sure we're installing rooftop fall protection near these units so that when our workers are performing routine maintenance they are safe while doing so. 
It's important to have a proper transition from roof level to roof level. And in this case, we have this nice strong staircase, which is gonna be a little bit more convenient than a fixed ladder because it's a lot easier to carry things up and just a lot easier to walk up it. Either way, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have guardrail on both sides of the stair or the ladder. So that this way, once you step out onto the roof, you're not exposed to a fall hazard. Here we have another roof hatch that needs to have fall protection. This one was installed pretty close to a roof edge, but they do have guardrail installed on the edge, which is great. However, the hatch itself still needs guardrail according to OSHA on any exposed sides, as well as a self-closing safety gate at the opening. This specific guardrail that was installed at the edge was installed literally at the edge of the roof. If you read the instructions for systems like this, most manufacturers are gonna tell you that the system is one, that it's temporary, and two, needs to be installed further back from the edge of the roof. And that's a wrap for today's site visit. I hope this was helpful for you as you walk your own rooftop and determine what areas are fall hazards and how you can protect your people against them. If you need help with that, or if you have additional questions, then please reach out to one of our fall protection experts, and we'd love to help you keep your people safe as they're working at heights. My name is Julian Adams. Thank you for watching, and have a safe day.